Hey there guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Road to Glory series. And first things first, Team of the Season Ruddy needs to be unlocked. I've pre-recorded a tournament cut run, so we're gonna go on that in just a second. Then we have the Weekend League results, SBC, and trying out a new Player of the Season card. He looks fantastic, and we're gonna give him a go in today's episode. I have been uh, cutting and swapping out a few of these cards. So with our attack, instead of playing Ronaldo as the left forward, I've switched Martial there just to keep a little bit more chemistry. So with Ronaldo, he's gonna start on seven. Doesn't really make too much of a difference. It is Ronaldo at the end of the day. A couple of new signings though. The first one is gonna be Miete. Miete. Let me know how you pronounce it, because I'm gonna be using him in the upcoming weekly league. So if I'm getting that pronunciation wrong, and I continue to do that, it's gonna be annoying so let me know how you pronounce his name uh, just write out in the comments for me with this absolute monster though six foot two low attacking medium defensive work rate so he's going to be perfect for a cdm spot i'm not going to be playing him as a y center mid a lot of people on twitter thought i was going to do that no 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 he's not good enough to be playing as a wide center mid Sixteen thousand coins though is a very good price and he has that pace height strength physical stats looks like a monster and he wasn't playing too bad right back position we've gone for solomon son and honestly as I have the luxury of these two legends I was able to cap off chemistry he's pacey he's tall he's physical and that's what I wanted 15,250 and then the last one you would have seen in an episode that we featured this guy in Theo Hernandez 63,000 coins and he is quality by the way and I really like his work rates medium medium I'm pretty sure that Clichy has medium medium and he was one of my go-to left backs on the game uh, since the start I loved him and yeah this guy is very very good with those physical stats and there is also good reason why Hugo Ruiz isn't with us right now um, yeah we may have used him in an SBC that I will show you in just a second but anyway guys let's get into uh, the weekend league no let's not get into the weekend league let's get into the daily knockout tournament and then we'll go into the weekend league and I'll tell you how I got on I just want to show you exactly the way I'm playing this side because a load of people were saying oh so if you're using Modric and Martial Who's playing Cam? Well, it's going to be Modric because Martial is more more or less like a striker um, over Modric. I prefer with, with that dribbling, the passing. He suits that position a little bit better. And I am using Kante as the left center mid. So here we are. That is exactly how I use the team. Are we ready to see how we got on? Let's go to the tournament. So last night I jumped into the tournament and I've been noticing a lot of people not really having that much thought process behind bringing their silvers into the side. And they've dropped in random centimeters, random fullbacks, and it's honestly not that difficult. Just think about it. You're needing to use three silvers in your starting 11, and it's not just for the daily knockout tournament. It's for the weekend league coming up. So make sure you build a side that you're comfortable with. To start off, Use two silver fullbacks. You can quite easily find good quality silvers that will be able to play at the standard of average goals or even good goals. Dick Meyer, Theo Hernandez is non inform And speaking about Hernandez, by the way, he's gone up his team of season to 120,000 coins. I should have bought loads when he was 40 to 60k and made a load of profit. Unfortunately, I didn't think like that far ahead. I wouldn't have believed his price would have gone up that high though, like 80, 90,000 coins seems to be a bit of a cutoff point for me. 120 is ridiculous. <laughs> but then again, weekend league requirements, that's what helps uh, prices go up. And with these silvers, I think I sold non-informed Theo Hernandez for 10,000 coins. I got Dick Meyer in the trade pile that I want to get rid of. Like loads of these cards are going to be selling. So just look at your team and think about where you struggle the most. If it's in the attack, then obviously I wouldn't recommend bringing in a silver attacker but what I would say two fullbacks that are silvers and bring in a CDM if you're someone that is playing a narrow formation a 4-3-2 on or a 4-1-2-1-2 if you have a silver CDM you've got the two center mids that are goals a good quality goals that can help support if he misses a tackle and then not to mention your two center backs that are just behind him so I like that to be honest and in this team uh, we're using the silver CDM from France I can't remember his name exactly he's he's a pretty beastly player he definitely has the pace and the strength obviously he's going to be a silver so he won't be on the level of Kante and Rude Hullet he's not doing a bad job though and I like the balance that I brought to this team right now the right back is solid he's six foot just quick that's what you really want and it doesn't matter too much about defending because you can stick on a chem style it's more to do with pace and strength and Theo Hernandez both fullbacks basically bring that and also the CDM so I have no problems really defending with the side it's whether or not the gameplay feels good and it's not one of these like 
like, oh god, Fuji's complaining about the gameplay again. No, seriously, I, I was to the point where I wasn't even losing that many games this weekend. It was, it wasn't enjoyable to play. Usually the weekend league isn't enjoyable anyway because it's stressful. You're needing to win the games, but sometimes I do like the competitive aspect of things. And if I can't pass, I literally couldn't play a switch, couldn't pass, couldn't tackle, I couldn't do anything. It was unplayable. Worst gameplay that I played today. So I was just really getting on with it though. We have finished on 36 wins, which is putting us, I think, in 14th position in the world for the top 100 monthly. That is absolutely insane. So all that we need now i think if we got back to back 33 wins 33 wins that would be definitely enough to get into the uh, top 100 monthly so we've got two weeks left i'm going to be doing my best to grind it out yes team of the season more team of the seasons will be released so it'll put a strain on the server but we are going to grind things out guys and this month we're getting top 100 well i hope anyway there you go guys we unlocked ruddy and he doesn't look that great yeah so like i mentioned guys we did finish on 36 wins out of the 40 and i honestly don't know how i've achieved that with the way the team was playing and the overall gameplay in the attack it was 50 50 whether or not i was able to come away with the win over my opponent the creativity wasn't there players were lunging for the ball taking awkward touches the movement system was off i was hitting the post far too often and really if we're wanting to push for top 100 monthly it's not good enough and i was literally moments away from quitting i put it on twitter right i'm done with the weekly league. sorry if you want to watch gameplay but then i thought to myself right i'm not recording anything i'm gonna focus we were 20 wins with three losses at one point and we've managed to finish on 36 wins so i had to grind it out and that puts us in a really good standing for top 100 monthly unfortunately weekly as you know i play mostly on saturday and sunday so my skill rating is never going to be as good as someone else that was on 36 wins so we can't get in the top one hundred uh, with uh, the monthly though where are we where where are we did we drop even more no there we are we're on 75 wins nan's party bag and we are doing it for the boys 18th in the world monthly what we need i think another like 32 33 wins will be good enough i'm gonna keep pushing for elite one if we hit elite one for the next two weeks then we will be guaranteed to get ourselves top 100 monthly let's not slip now oh now i've said that we're gonna slip no seriously though i'm pretty happy that we're gonna get there if we just play properly and the gameplay doesn't mess us up that much but yeah 70 wins uh, 75 wins out of the 80 is really really good stuff so unfortunately we haven't got top 100 weekly we still get the two team of the week packs i think neymar may be in team of the week which would be uh, pretty awesome but anyway enough of that we need to go unlock the sbc Mbappe. So if you guys haven't seen already, two new player SBCs were dropped onto the game. Player of the season, Mbappe, and also player of the season, Cavani. Now the card design, I do love the purple look. What they should have done though, as they've already released player of the year cards for Deli Alley and uh, Kante, maybe had a gold trim on those. And as these guys are team of the seasons or player of the seasons, I should say, maybe have a silver trim. That could be pretty cool. But regardless of what the cards look like, the stats that they're bringing to your team, absolutely incredible. And the overall cost, 110,000 coins for Mbappe and really the majority of the budget went on a special item what I should have done before they were even dropped onto the game was to go and purchase an in for Mbappe to make sure I know that I went and sniped this card for 80,000 where he was selling for 50 so it's not really too much of a difference there in terms of like value I, I could have got it for a lot cheaper though which uh, I kind of like kicked myself over. I got use out of all of the monthly reward cards though. I know that Casemiro 87 rated where we've already got the team of the group stage 88 so I got rid of him. Tolvan like it didn't cost us that much and what we got back one of the packs not only a team of the season which discards for 20,000 coins which I will keep at the club anyway just in case you need to use those for future SBCs who was next to him Dimitri Payet who I sold for 20,000 coins I'll give you an update in the trade pile in just a second so that pack alone we got back 40,000 coins and then not to mention the other discard like players and and uh, well eventually cards that I can sell on so yeah I think that like, overall we got back maybe 55 60,000 coins where we spent 110,000 we got it for very very cheap so mbappe welcome to the club and we need to go and uh, do an update with the trade pole because uh, yeah i think i've sold some silvers on some golds let's take a look
Honestly, I thought I had a few more players to share with you, literally three in the trade pile. Anyway, Theo Hernandez, I was intending to use this card before he received that most consistent, so I bought him for 6,000 coins with the Shadow Chemistry style, sold him on for 10, so not, not bad profit, but not that much. Dimitri Payet, as we pulled him, and he was instant selling for 22,000 coins, I thought to get rid of him. I do believe you need to use him in the Cavani SPC, so that's great. And then with Kiesler, 26,000 coins, I never got around to trying him because with our team, we swapped it out and brought in three team of the season most consistent cards. So that's the update, guys. Let's go and have a look what we've done with the Mbappe squad. I'm using Ruddy as well. Let's see what he's all about. The formation that we're going to be using today for the Mbappe squad is going to be the 4-3-3 attacking variant. Number four, I've been using the 4-3-3 flat recently, and I like the fact that you're able to keep possession very well, spread the play, and I honestly would say it weighs out the cons of defending. Yes, you'll be open at times because of your centimeters, they will push on. You've got to find the perfect players to suit that formation. So with Mbappe, let's take a look at this card. 89 rated, and he has had a serious boost. With the last version that I used, the team in a group stage one or team in a tournament, whatever it was called, he was all right, a good finisher, didn't really do too much for the side. With this card though, pace, shooting, passing, dribbling, physical stats. Yes, he doesn't have the skill moves. Three star is all right and four star weak foot is very, very nice. So yeah, he looks absolutely insane. And then we've got uh, Ruddy. Um, yeah, he's one of those 87 rated cards that doesn't really warrant the rating. Who knows how he's going to play? Medium, medium work rates, absolutely perfect for the 4-3-3. Hula in there, Dembele, I dropped in Dick Meyer just because I was needing chemistry down that right hand side. And overall, it's a solid team. Yeah, Marco Royce is back in the side. I'm looking to really spread the play and just play it across to Mbappe. So the custom tactics I'm going to be using in the 4-3-3 haven't really changed too much. The shooting's gone up to 65. I'm actually going to put up the speed to uh, 80. The gameplay recently has been so slow, so it's going to go up to 80 speed. Pressure 55, aggression 55, and now the player instructions, to be honest. Um, get in behind, stay back while attacking for the two center mids. You want to leave the wingers balanced, to be honest. Let them do what they want, and the rest of the team is ready i think we need one more win to win the division one title but it's not really about winning the division one title we've got to try out this man right here mbappe is he gonna lead us to victory let's find out so this right here is one tasty looking hybrid ronaldo hazard Gianfranco zola okay mbappe you've got to step up there we go one twos it just feels very very slow give it back to mbappe outside finesse oh of course the keeper's gonna save it and i'm injured brilliant that's it simple pass through through ball mbappe he's got some weird animation right now he running like is it uh mbappe where are you at mbappe there you are mbappe run that's it. Four star weak foot. Can it come into play? A cross goal. Another save from De Gea. Most of these shots that I'm taking on with Mbappe keep going straight down the middle of the goal. And I don't know what's happening there. Let's get that first goal with Hullet. Game over. It's got to be game over. He hasn't had any shots at all in this half. It's more to do with getting the ball in the back of the net with Mbappe. Look at these halftime stats. Eight shots, eight on target, and we've only scored one goal. Mbappe feels a little bit weak, to be honest. His positioning does seem a little bit weird, to be honest, but he is through here. Mbappe across goal. Oh, lovely. Good finish. Uh, he's taken a lot of shots on in this game, though, so the return hasn't been that good. And the 87 physical, I don't know where he's getting that from. He does feel weak. In the middle we go, over the top to Mbappe, it's got blocked, I couldn't even play a switch, it was literally running with um, Mbappe instead, it's so bad. Like defending is so difficult, it is honestly unbelievably bad. There we go, through ball, well played, Mbappe, back heel, finesse. Another shot that's gone straight. Two on it finished, and it turned into a game where I had to grind out, really. I was dominating him in the first half, had so many shots with Mbappe, couldn't find the back of the net. Eventually, he scored. His finishing, it seems to be aiming straight down the middle of the goal instead of like far corners. We'd have to play another game. This time, we are facing the wide 4 1 2 1 2 formation. So, you're going to be thinking right now, what is Fuji doing? Has he made a mistake? This shouldn't be here. Where's the live portion of the video? Well, it would have been live. Unfortunately, I went into the match and I looked over at my audio recording and it started to freeze, frosted over and said not responding. So I waited. 
and I was waiting, still didn't respond, so basically the first half of that match was missed, didn't have any audio recording, so I've completely scrapped it, and I'm going to show you the highlights as it won't look as bad, hopefully anyway, so yeah, apologies for that, but with Mbappe, what a game to miss, he turned up, he finished 4-2, he was scoring goals left, right and centre, and honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say though, he's not that strong. In the first game, he was getting bars off the ball. In this game, he was 87 physical. Where are these stats coming from? So I wouldn't advise playing him in a 4-3-3 as a lone striker because he just doesn't have that strength. I would recommend having that secondary striker doing the one-twos and really playing to his strengths. He is quick and he's got a decent shot. Well, in the last game, it really did show. I'm going to play a few more games with him, though. Not in today's episode. I'm going to scrap this. I don't know what is happening with my computer. It is... I can't wait until I get the new one uh, sent because, yeah, it's just... Absolutely messing up. Before to it finish, guys, do apologize for that. Let's go back into the team. So you guys would know this already as I'm going to record over that gameplay. Well, that's what I'm intending to do anyway. I went into the match, looked over my audio recording, and for whatever reason, it, it stopped and it wasn't responding. So I had to wait for that to then respond again. So I'm completely scrapping that last game. And that is where I'm going to end today's episode because I don't know what's going on with my computer. And speaking about computers, I've ordered myself one. I'm going to be ordering myself a new one tonight. I've put it all together, built it, and it should be coming sometime next week. So fingers crossed, it... Uh, um, it arrives, it works, and I will be able to produce 1080p 60 frame per second videos, and it will just add to the content as well. So hopefully you will enjoy that. And Mbappe, though, in the last game, he really did turn up. Four goals for him, good finishing as well. And I can't really give you my overall opinion because I've only played the two games. I will be using him a lot over the next couple of days, though. Um, so in the future episodes on the Road to Glory, we will see how he's uh, been playing for us. His strength doesn't feel that great. His finishing is good, though. So yeah, we we'll have to give him a go and Rudy mm, yeah it wasn't really that special so anyway guys if you have enjoyed today's episode of the Rose of Glory make sure to leave a like are you going to be unlocking Cavani or Mbappe let me know in the comment section and I will see you on the next episode team out Peace.